So three years ago, when I first moved into my house, I built this gaming table that is a Wood Whisperer Guild project. It came with great plans and videos, and I took that and I modified it to be a poker table, and I use it all the time. I'm really happy with how this came out, and I'm really happy with the quality of the plans and the videos that Mark provided. The table has been wonderful for me. There's just been one major problem that I have. That's right. Three years later and I still haven't built the chairs. I want to start this video off by acknowledging that these chairs I'm building are not my design. Like my poker table, they're based on a Wood Whisperer Guild project with a few small modifications. And because this is not my design, I won't be going into a lot of details that I normally would. If you want to find the plans I used, as well as a series of 15 videos detailing how these were built, head over to woodwhispererguild.com to find Mark's originals. Even though I'm using Mark's plans, there are some things I will be doing differently in this build. The first of those things is how I will be utilizing my stock to get the most efficient use of material I can. I have some fairly wide boards with very straight grain that work perfectly for nesting. Now nesting is a lean manufacturing concept where you cut your pieces out in a way that minimizes the waste in your material. And in order to do that, I needed to do a little testing with a prototype rear leg first. Once I was happy that I was able to cut out all of my joinery with the front and back curves already cut in, I could move on to creating my routing template for those two sides. I'm using the offcuts of the prototype leg to build the template and added some toggle clamps to hold everything down. I tend to build a lot of routing templates, so I'll sometimes reuse the toggle clamps from other jigs rather than buying new ones. Next up is laying out all of my legs onto three large blanks. These blanks are all between 9 and 10 inches wide, and if I were to cut them into individual 4 inch blanks for each leg, I would get about two legs per blank. By nesting them, I'm able to get four legs per blank. Now this works for me because I have the joining capacity to manage larger blanks, and also because the grain on these is pretty straight and consistent across each piece, so I don't need to be very picky with my layout. On other species of wood, this might not be as easy to do. The one major downside here is that these larger blanks are a little harder to handle at the bandsaw. The way I handled that is to make one of my cuts in the center of the board first, so that from that point on I can work with smaller pieces. I'm making sure to stay a little outside of the line on all these cuts and I'll perfect that shape when I clean them up at the router table. Now my routing template isn't actually tall enough to do all of my routing in one pass, which is okay with me. I can still get the profile routed to the template by taking two passes on each side. This does slow me down a little bit, but in the end it's probably safer, especially since I do have to do a couple sections of uphill routing on each side of the leg. After the first pass, I simply raise my bit to be slightly higher than the leg and take a second pass to remove the material left over from the first one. After the first side is done, I move the leg to the other side of the template, lower the bit, and repeat the process. Rinse and repeat for all 12 legs. Okay, so the first round of cuts is done, and I've got everything shaped and that went pretty well. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. So the next step is to start marking for the joinery. First of all, I need to set these up and mark them as pairs. The reason I need to do that is I need to establish 
an inside face on each one of these and it's, they're gonna basically be mirror images of each other. There's gonna be left and right. And I want that inside face marked on both surfaces where I'm gonna be marking the mortises. The reason is I will reference off that because that's the surface that's gonna go down against the bed of the horizontal slot mortiser. Now that I've got that established, the next thing I need to do is to mark the center line for all of my mortises. Now, when I did my prototype leg, I marked out the full width of the mortise so that I can make sure that my setup was just what I needed over at the mortiser. However, now that I've got that set up and, and I've established my setup blocks and everything I need there, all I need to be able to cut these is the center line. I've got two different center lines, one for the front and one for that inside face. So to make this a little bit easier, I'm gonna do a couple things. One, I've already done it on that set. I'm going to use my routing template as a story stick. So I've got that center line marked here. And since this references one edge here, I can lock it in solid up against that and I can transfer that line. I'll mark the center line for the front mortise on each leg first, then I'll go back and make a small mark for the inside mortise and then transfer it to the side of the leg that I marked as the inside a few minutes ago. Once all of my mortises are marked out, I can take my legs over the slot mortiser. The front mortise is pretty easy to do. It was the inside mortise that I was concerned about and I had to test on my prototype. The issue here is that I have to have a good reference surface and also have enough material to be able to clamp the leg down to the mortiser bed. Luckily it all worked out and I was able to nest the legs like I wanted. With the joinery cut into the legs, the next step is to finish shaping them. I made a small change to the template to account for a different method of joinery for the crest rail, but otherwise I'm using it as designed. I trace the template on the back side of the legs and take them over to the bandsaw to remove the waste. Just like before, I'm staying on the outside of the lines and I'll clean the legs up over at the oscillating spindle sander. Compared to the rear legs, the front legs are pretty straightforward and much less complex. I'll start by cutting down my stock into some slightly oversized blanks. This African mahogany tends to have some tension in it, so I take my time and go a little slower than I normally would at the table saw.
The blanks are brought down to their final size at the planer. I send them through once, rotate them 90 degrees, and send them through again for each pass. Doing it this way, I can make sure that the legs are the exact same dimension in both directions. Okay, so all of my front leg blanks are ready to go. They are at essentially their final dimension before they get joinery and get, um, and get tapers cut onto them. I ended up with the larger blanks I had cutting down to having enough leg blanks to have one spare and then also one more extra that really is unusable just because I ended up getting one more than I thought I would, but there's a big uh, bug hole in this one that I don't think is gonna be able to cut away. So, so I'm gonna use this one as a template to set everything up. Setting up for the joinery on this is pretty simple. The thing I need to keep in mind is I just went through these and looked for any defects that I want to get rid of. And there's only a few minor ones, but there are some spots where there are, and that's fine because I've got an opportunity to be able to get rid of a little bit more. Um, number one, there's gonna be tapers cut into this. So if it's just on one side and if it's not too deep, I can simply position it so that that defect gets cut out when I cut the tapers. Again, all I'm gonna need on the majority of these is to mark the center line for the two mortises that I need to cut. Now the center line is going to be an inch and a half down. So I, I will use that one for setup. And now I just have to figure out what I'm doing with the rest of these and mark them all out the same way. I'm all set up here at my mortiser for the first cut on the test piece. Now, one of the things that I also have an option to do is to use a stop lock on these. In this case, these legs are all gonna be identical pieces. They each receive two mortises on the same end. So it's not like there's one down here and one down here. So it makes it real easy. I can cut one, flip it 90 degrees, cut the second one, be done with it. and. I really didn't have to have that center mark. Center mark certainly helps to line everything up, but this is just another option. So to speed things up a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. Last step for the front legs is to cut the taper on the back and inside faces. I have this fancy store-bought tapering jig that was given to me as a gift, and I love it, but it's definitely not needed to do this. You can make a pretty quick tapering jig with a piece of sheet goods of your choice and some scraps. You can also cut the tapers at the bandsaw and just clean them up with some hand tools when you're done. That's where I'm going to leave this one. In the next video, I'll be adding in the rails, cutting a bunch of angle joinery, and making all these pieces start to look like chairs. I hope you enjoyed this. Hope to see you next time. Thanks.